previously on The Outlaws. The serpent lies in the shadows, preying on the weak. Many schemes are being made in the dark, soon to be brought to the light. I ask myself, I'm ready. Truth is, I'm losing grip on my own mind. I can't control it. I feel like a time bomb. Time will soon run out. Whatever comes next, I hope I'm strong enough to make it through. Please hurry. He's bleeding. We need to help the man. What's all this about now? There was a man down the road. I saw him stab someone and run. Come on, you have to help him. He's gonna die. That watch is gone. Move in. to do your thing, Bill. Get working on the vault. Hey, hey, Captain. Old man Bill here with his magic fingering. Christ. My people went on teaching me all about how to use my magic hand. Quiet, God damn it. Just focus on the lock. No talk. Otto, and what the hell are you doing? Watch the damn street! How hard is that for you to follow with that big brain of yours? Sorry, boss. I'm sober. Stop yelling! You're all in a scaling old beer! We need to bar the doors. You've got company. I can tell. Thank you very much, Kurt. Wait, 
taking your sweet little time and open the damn door. Ice can only go so fast. We'll go faster. This I keep. Hey, over there! Search the area. Shoot to kill. Oh. Time to go. How's it looking? Uh, I don't know. We need to get out of here. I can't work with bullets flying over my head. Bill? I'd be hurting. Well, I think. I think I will live. Work! Russ and the sniper. Forget it. They're meeting us back at camp. Let's go. Questions for you. You want to make an issue out of this? Must be something serious for you to stroll in here this late. I'll let you be. Yeah, that's right. Now you know we're in charge here. I swear I get more attitude from that hillbilly lawman. I'll feed him his damn badge. Well, at least we're getting paid decent.
Good evening, sir. You better wake up before the shooting starts. Excuse me. Stay sharp. I don't think that I'm able to do that. What, you got important business this is keeping you from? It's not exactly lawful, if you know what I mean. Hey, you got your orders. Now follow them. Told you, the boss man isn't here. You're gonna have to wait. Come on. I have so many places to be and many more clients to see. I'm sorry. I can't speak for the boss. Only himself and Curse. I labor and toil up this frigid snowscape with an agreement in mind. And now you deny your boss of his deal. Oh, how your head will roll when he finds you steal. What? I ain't steal nothing. Achterlijke hond. No, no. You steal him of his deal. A deal he had made with me. Now I request you go and get your boss lest you wish to find yourself at the bottom of the Black Sea. I told you, he is not here. Lock, there's the man you want to talk to. Get your asses inside. We're about to have company. Jesse, split a few guys with you in the other cabins. Have your weapons drawn in the windows to any of those fuckers who show up. But you wait for my signal. Well, shoot. Don't make me wait too long. Don't do it here in the open, goddammit! Get him inside! The hell is Bill? Crazy coot go off running again? I look like his babysitter. I ain't keeping tabs on him. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Ice! Get over here! At your disposal. I don't care where you go. Just make sure you get your eyes on the clammy fuck leading the charge. Kill the bastard when I make my move. And only on my move. Got it? It will be easy as cake. You mean easy as pie. Oh, no, no. It is cakewalk. Yes. <laughs> Inside.
fuck, that's a lot of a lot that we have planned for. So? Oh, I gotta admit, looks like we made an understatement on how many would be showing up to this party. How many? A rough estimate? I'd say one, two, three. Not too many to count. How the hell are we walking out of this one? What are you, chicken? Scared or something? Scared? Ah, call it worried. Oh, that may you need. We zijn omsingeld. Oh god. Oh, heb genade op mij. Hey, Germany, get away from that window. <coughs> it is Dutch, and I am not one to be ordered around by the likes of you. So it is within my rights to hold my own concerns in here. I don't give a damn if you speak French, Chinese, or Mexican. Listen to me, because your little life is in my hands right now. My life lies with your superior and my business associate. You are less than a piece of muck I pull from my boots. I should... <sighs> Fuck you. Benjamin McAllister, slowly present yourself outside, disarmed with your hands locked above your head. And we may just let the rest of your merry crew walk free. We both know how this goes, Benny. Hands in the air. <laughs> Here I am. Well, gonna slap the cuffs on me or what? Do it. We're gonna put you where you belong. Ja, 
God damn it! I ain't dying like this! Not another step forward or she dies. Back inside, Kirch. We have to do what he says. Ah, I will handle these. Boss. They got my family. I'll say again, Benjamin McAllister. You are under arrest. Come willingly or your situation here will worsen. <laughs> Seems to me that you're the one in the situation. Look around you, Marshal. Your blood is on your hands. Don't test me. You have until the count of three to put your guns on the ground, both of you. One. Two. Three. <laughs> you really think I care about your damn hostages? <laughs> you really thought that? Oh, Marshal, let me show you how much I really care. No!
You okay? Just dandy. This would be insulting even for a low band of clod-hopping louts. The type of behavior to be expected from the likes of bumbling buffoons. Not a step further. Fucking asshole! Sit. Down. Bruise my face, you dumbbell. A bruised face will be the least of your worries. You are the son of Mr. McCrae, yes? Son? I am the heir. My brothers are none of your concern. You speak with me now. I will converse with Mr. McCrae and only Mr. McCrae himself. Not his... Uh, horse. Damn, he got you there! Quiet, you pricks! You call yourself a man of great dignity and value. And yet you spin insults of which are that of a lowly child. <laughs> Devin, I'm getting tired of this one. You know what to do. I'd suggest you run in a hurry to save your friend down there before he drowns. You do not need his permission. Now run! You dare. Do not speak. I speak. And then you respond. Show a modicum of respect. You cannot speak of respect when- When I do what, exactly? From where I stand, it is you who attended as a guest under my name. It is you who killed a man when graciously welcomed into my home. It is you who cannot speak of respect, as I offer a great deal of it by allowing you to remain alive and still breathing. Now, I know my father has so politely refused your offer. The offer in which $30,000 would be put in the care of my family name. Yet, I don't ever recall having the opportunity to speak on this case. Very well. I'm a man of compromise, so you may speak your piece and I shall listen. I will allow you to walk free on the condition that you immediately take a trip down to the city bank and make a transfer to my name. After all, who owns the little army you want from us? I do. If I were to leave here tonight with a poor impression, then maybe... Maybe there will be some difficulties with my father. This is blackmail. No compromise. The deal was with your father, and he will most definitely hear of this disgraceful insult. Hey, Antonio! Yes, boss? So unfortunate that the governor put up a fight. Of course I wouldn't harm a man who deals with you. Too bad they shot one of ours in the dealings. But of course, Mr. Alcott, I'd dispose of the body if you were to ask nicely. Well, I would if we were friends. You wish to frame me? First you insult my dignity and threaten to harm me, then you throw my trusted friend over the railing with intent to take his life, and now you wish to frame me for a murder of which is your doing? You seem to forget. You have no power here. Ask yourself, who will my father believe most? His son, successor to his buddy empire and all that he'd worked to achieve? Or a deceitful governor who's already killed once? and will ultimately work to destroy his life's dream. My father's most skilled marksman, Devon here, will now be embedded into your service. Devon will assist you in the business arrangements you've made, and will also ensure the arrangement between you and me is seen through. Isn't that right, Devon? Yes, I'll make sure that it's done. Good. 
Now, I assume you will do as I ask. You already know what will happen if you scurry off to my father. Devin will do the courtesy of escorting you to the bank. San Denis is a big city and you may get lost. Time to wake your lazy hides up. We've got work to do. You hear me? All of you get up or I'll come over there myself and make you up. <sighs> uh, that's what's all this about. Couldn't you just have asked nicely, boss? Yeah, should we really be firing off our guns right now? We live on the great frontier. And I ain't nobody gonna give a damn about a few gunshots. Now gather round, everyone. Now, I would like to apologize about last night. We are a family here. And when one of my own goes behind my back spewing his little mouth to the law, I tend to feel something you would all call Betrayal. Mac was a goddamn rat. A pest that I promptly exterminated. If anyone has something to say about this, then I'd advise you speak up about it. No? Good. Moving on. Everyone in this camp can enjoy the good company of Uncle Sam's dollar bill. Who doesn't love God's good greens, am I right? Now the oil we have here is a good first step. But I have something much, much bigger in store for each and every one of you. I have word of a train, <laughs> but not just any train, no, 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 no. This is a very special train. See, this train is carrying something better than just a few hundred pounds of cash. It's carrying gold. Did you say gold? <laughs> Holy shit. You're kidding, right? Now, I know what y'all are thinking. Gold? How's that possible? Well, let me put those doubts to rest. Get them out here, Woodson. Y'all ordered a government agent? Why don't you let our friend here loose? Get some blood to those legs. Don't want to have to cut them off now, do we? Who's this? A friend. Someone who Benjamin paid to get results. Ah, oh, so like me and Danny. Freelance. Something similar. Yes. Try anything, and I'll blow both your feet off. Very painful experience. Trust me. This here is a genuine official for the big U.S. of A. Someone with big, important status who we really know is just another glorified lackey to the system. He works the United States Treasury. In fact, I think he is the damn nation's treasurer. United States Treasurer. Ooh, such a big title. And yet, who's out here looking for you? No one. <laughs> That's how much our great nation cares about someone so important. Woodson managed to track the worm down to his home in Blackwater. 
poor little fella had a family and everything. You're telling me you kidnapped the damn treasure for the United States? We've done worse, Russie. God damn it, Ben, you could have told me about this. Well, then it wouldn't have been a surprise, now would it? Anyways, big title or not, the man has some very good news for us. So why don't you let everyone know what we discussed? I ain't saying anything. Come on now. We've discussed this. You don't talk, and I can't guarantee the safety of your wife or your two kids. You you can't do this to them, sir. Please. They did nothing wrong. It's okay now. Just talk, and everything's gonna be a-okay. Okay. I'll talk. Just don't hurt them. There is a train from Station 501, California. Manifests are E-52. It's scheduled to be offloaded in the capital. And what is it that's so important about this particular train? I, it's carrying gold exports that will be deposited into the United States Treasury. I warn you, sir, this is a very dangerous thing you're doing and- There you have it, people. A train full of gold right for the taking. This is our chance. Please, sir, can I be returned to my family? I've done as you asked. Ah, well, I, I'm afraid your family will never see you again. Wait, no, the deal was... Now, the, the deal was, for your compliance, your family would be spared. It mentioned nothing to do with you. But what? No, you can't do this. They'll die without me. Please, any of you, this is wrong. You can't let them do this. Please. Take him somewhere far away. Make him disappear. Keep the family. He was nice with us, so we'll be nice with what's left of him. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Please, don't do this. I beg of you. Shut up. here today each have an equally important role in this. Our friend there was nice enough to provide us with even more information. Names, lists, locations. We can get the dirty details all squared away later. Right now we need to prepare. Cole, don't act like I don't see you cowering in the back there. Your job will be moseying on down into St. Denis, getting our way through the vault door. A vault? What kind of train has a vault we can't just break the lock to? Awake and you're already mighty and wise, hired gun? I, I know it might not occur to you, but the target we're hitting isn't just an average carrier train. We're not stealing your granny's jewelry here. So the deal with this vault, what are we looking for in San Denis? Before bringing that government fool here, Woodson was able to convince a little letter out of him. Directed to the head of state, Governor of Lemoyne. I forgot the idiot's name, but he has the ability to get a key to the train. And that is what our dear treasurer requested. Instead of the treasurer, though, it will of course be your team. You make a surprise visit and take the key from him. Then you return here. And we'll go from there. You do realize the governor of Lemoyne is the same governor who had me locked up. The same governor who we definitely pissed off storming through his town, riddling it with bullets. <laughs> oh well. Then it'll just be a great opportunity to kill him. Tie up uh, loose ends or whatever. You'll figure it out, I'm sure. What's our cut on the job anyways? Colt will get 30% of the tyke. I'll leave it to him to figure out how he's dividing it. 30% more low. Uh, fair enough. Now get your asses in gear. Sooner we get the case, sooner we can get to planning on this thing.
I don't believe we finished our little chat last night. You had to do this again? And God just spare me this once? Get out of the way. <laughs> Simmer down, you two. We're not here to fight, yes. We want to help. Anything to do with this guy is just asking for more trouble. Go to hell, Cyclops. Ah, oh, will you shove it, Jesse? Benjamin wanted Colt in charge of this one. Oh, you're not doing this out of the kindness of your heart? We're robbing a federal train. I don't think any of us are doing this for good intentions. Well, if you're coming with, then do it already. Count me in. Coming with. The situation with you and Jesse is a bit unstable, so I'd tag along and keep the peace. Just don't get in the way. Hey, no need to worry about me. I know how it goes. Alright, so we all ready to go then? Let's ride. First time? Huh? This is your first time in the big city, yeah? I can tell you're a country boy. Not my first time. I was with my brother. You're right about growing up in the ass end of nowhere, though. Family ranch. Miserable time. Nah. Where I'm coming from is lots bigger than this. Where's that? New York City. With the Five Points Gang, right up until me and a brother of mine had to leg it from the feds. On the run with your brother, been down that road. We were right knackered, going about tiptoeing around the law. Me and the brother were eventually locked up in that manky prison down the river here, till I managed to make a break for it during the heat of a riot. Lucky to escape that prison. Most men would never see the free world again. Call it some of that Irish luck? Ah, but what I wouldn't do to be a culture like you. A simple life. Why'd you go and give it up? Zack. My brother wanted a better life, a fresh start. Eventually it led me here, and him, the bullet in the head. A dodgy subject, that is. Loss of your own blood is a brutal thing to hold up with. Never seen my brother make it out of that prison. Knowing him, he'd gone and got himself killed in there, so at least we go about sharing a thing or two. Well, I'm off to the gun shop down the street. I know the owner, I'm sure he'll be more than delighted to see me. Sounds good. Don't draw too much attention to yourself. Same for you. Need to keep a low profile. You're a wanted man after all. Nothing out of the ordinary. Just a standard alleyway, boss. Great place to mug a guy. Maybe we take this time to devise a plan, yeah? Get it with this planning shit. Takes all the fun away, you know? Rather plan ahead than end up dead. Contact will be meeting us. Meaning, 
you have the forward position in the event that things go down. Which they definitely will. I was thinking that if we have a man at all entrances and the shooting starts, they'll be ready on all sides to push any law straight into the center. Ah, so they'll be surrounded by all sides. No escape for the pricks. Exactly. And if our man with the key tries to make a break for it, he'll be cut off before he can make it out. Classic pincer movement. Nice thinking. The hell y'all talking about? Double envelopment. It's a tactic the army uses. Read about it in a book. Carter, Donovan, when you scouted out the place, how many ways in and out did you see? There's four ways. North side leads upper city, church in the Chinatown district to the east, and a gate leading to the industrial at the west. Oh, and the uh, docks in the south. You seem to know your way around. Familiar with the city. Guess you can say that. Oh, and uh, the gate to the west is locked. I, uh, I looked. Hmm. Hey, Jax, you take north. Jesse, on the south. And Donovan, you cover the east. For the west gate, hopefully it'll stay locked. Maybe block it shut somehow. Carter, I need you with me. Just act tough, and all the while, I do the talking. Got it. Ajax, Donovan, and Jesse. Especially Jesse. I don't want you guys getting spotted. If you were to hide and watch, do not fire a single shot until the fighting starts. The plan relies on the element of surprise. Without that, we're all fucked. And who are you? The one with the key. Where is the secretary treasurer? Bit preoccupied. You work for the governor? We do. And you must be the ones who went out kidnapping a high valley official. And are now wanted dead or alive in all 45 states. Could have sworn I already had the privilege the past three years. Hey, you look familiar. Have I seen your face before? Where? Oh, might have been those countless posters strung up on every damn wall in the city. <laughs> Gotta say, pretty stupid of you to show your face here. And here I thought, coat and hat hid me well. Only got in the way. Governor prefers not having to clean up a mess of a few dead worthless outlaws, but I don't mind either way. You come in easy or we gun the two of you down here. Make your mind up. Hey, you Carter. What'd you say about giving these walls a new paint job? I'm with you on this. Should be a fun time. So, uh, how much is that guy paying you anyways? You ready to die for some stuck-up rich asshole? This isn't about who we're fighting for, it's why. Colt McAllister working for someone else? Damn! I thought the big bad outlaw ran alone, but wait. <laughs> it's great old grandpappy, what a fucking surprise. We both know you'd kill your own family given the chance. Already did it once with your brother. So you want to go then, you bald motherfucker? So that's how it's gonna be. Shit, I'm fucking hurt! 
Where the fuck did he go? I don't fucking know shit. Worthless. Lock it down. No one's in or out. Oh, holy mother! This was a part of the damn plan. You gotta be kidding me. Turn around and I fire a bullet into your fucking head. You think you got it all figured out, don't you, kid? You just go and kill any man standing in your way. That's what you do. No regard for someone just doing their job. Then kill me do it. At the end of the day, we're all just some pawns in the game. Me and you are being played. So make your move. Show me. Good one. I'll give you that. One of us won't make it out of this. You know that. Yeah. And it won't be you. You're too cocky. It'll be the death of you. Oh, thanks for the advice. Fucking big head genius. Stay down. It's nothing personal. Holy shit, what the hell are you doing? Go 
know. Put the damn gun down. I know him. No. No. I deserve to fucking die. Kill me. I deserve to fucking die. Sometimes, it's the worst punishment to live with the pain of your actions. Tie him up. We're leaving. <laughs> Come on, Doc, I'm hungry. Do you want some disgusting mush, or do you want my famous kibal stew? <laughs> if I recall, that's a type of meat. Something from Central Europe? Polish cuisine, actually. A sausage. And you got your hands on this Polish export. Uh, well, no, it's venison. But, hey, give me a break. I'm making substitutes here for a famous family recipe. You're from Poland? How's it over there? Ah, uh, well, a lot of bad memories. To make a long story short, I was born into a rich, successful family who wanted me to be rich and successful. So, they sent me to America, bought my way into a private school, which I'll add up that I never wanted to do in the first place. I would have loved to go to school. Could have fooled me. Heck, I think you're the smartest one here. Even smarter than me. <laughs> now you're just saying that to make me feel good. No, I'm serious. I know how to clean a wound and patch up a shoulder, but you probably be able to whip up something to cure TB. We're gonna need some help over here. Oh, crap. Hey, what about dinner? Move it or I'll make a holy show out of you, you damn traitor. One traitor is shite and his lowly friend. Courage. Go to hell. You left us. You betrayed your family. You gunned down my family in front of my face. I have nothing to say to you. You know I had to do what I did. We all would have died up on that mountain. But betrayal? You're working with the goddamn law now? I thought you were better than this. What in the hell are you doing bringing the goddamn enemy to the camp? Where else do you suppose I bring them? Why not walk them right back to the sheriffs? I want these two tied to a fucking pole. Especially this one. Make his ropes tight. I want his hands to be blue as he suffers and starves for being the goddamn backstabbing coward he is.
patch the wound, but don't you dare clean it. I want it to fester. His skin to rot. The wound to ooze and blister as he feels the wretched, agonizing pain of his life fading. I want to see the taint and corruption spread throughout his frail little body. Maybe then he'll understand the impact he made when he decided to sell out his own family. You heard the man. <laughs> well. Do as you're told. Have a seat with me. There was no key. It was all a setup. Knew we were coming. And now we have no way to get the goal. Any great ideas? Possible to blow the vault open? Without derailing the train and painting the biggest red target right on our fucking back? No. Can the lock be picked or opened in any other way? Hmm. There is the possibility that it could be jimmied open. I knew a guy, always on about his magic fingers. But honestly, I'd be surprised if that wacko's still above ground. It's worth a shot. Problem is, he isn't exactly all right in the head. Doesn't like to be found. I can send a guy or two looking for him, but in the meantime, we should prepare for the worst. So... Derailing the train, blowing it open, carrying the gold, all while being shot at by a bunch of pissed off lawmen. Oh, if only it were just a few lawmen. <laughs> this train is carrying pure gold down to the capital. You can bet your ass there'll be a bunch of soldiers checking the routes. So once that train doesn't make it to a checkpoint, a battalion from the National Guard will mosey on down to the train tracks and won't stop till we're all just corpses riddled with holes. Not my plan for retirement. Huh. Fucking course. Couldn't just be a simple job. No. Wanna start a war with the goddamn army. What did you expect? You go digging for gold, then you're guaranteed a few cave-ins. If we're smart and quick, then the army won't be a problem. That's my concern. The crew ain't exactly smart, nor are they quick. That's why I'm sending yours. You all know what you're doing, and with you in charge, I'm sure there's no way in hell you can fail. You're throwing us to the wolves, you fuck. You're gonna go ahead and use us again, just like the oil job? You may see it like that, or however the hell you wish. What I see is a job I need done, and how I see is the most efficient way to do it. You haven't heard the other half of the plan, so quit jumping to your conclusions. Let's say it. Justify throwing us off to do your dirty work. I want to hear the bullshit straight from your mouth. We hit the train when it's up in the valley right above Valentine. You been there? Yes. The hell does that have to do with anything? Oh, lovely little town. After the mining magnate was killed off, the town went back to sharing sheep and breeding their cows. Quite an influential hub for the great American livestock trade. Okay, and? Well, that oil you got for me was all part of the bigger picture. We're taking one of those wagons and using it to get the gold. To blow the vault open? And not quite. I did my book readings, all that research, and that vault was made out of some high-grade stuff. Built to withstand any explosions and inferno. So, the oil's pretty useless on that. We have a delivery to make in Valentine, in fact. It's around the same time your team robs a train. The town has been aching for oil, and I've decided to go and make a charitable donation out of the kindness of my heart. You're gonna blow it up, aren't you? Great minds think alike. 
can't just roll a wagon full of oil into a town and expect it to blow. Not to mention it'll blow up half the damn town. And I've got something for that too. See, I'm being smart about this. You might have seen Ace, Dimitri, the Russian guy. He practically lives for shooting things through his scope. I could never understand it. Damn things always give me a headache. But anyway, we prop him up on a hill outside of Valentine. And when the time's right, he'll fire off a single bullet and rain hail over the whole dang town, causing one mighty distraction. And killing a bunch of innocent people. Can't agree to this. Christ, you and your crusade to save every single living person on the planet. I'd known you to be too worried about killing some worthless cattle farmers. So I got to thinking. We sent two guys in on the wagon an hour before the train's in the valley. They wait, and when noon strikes, the church bells start ringing. The two of them can tell every poor little farmer to get away. That there's a leak or whatever with the wagon. And then, boom! Once our guys make it clear, Dimitri fires, the wagon blows, and nobody dies in coats. Perfect, perfect world. As long as we stay clear of killing a bunch of people that have nothing to do with the train, then I'm good with your plan. See? Fantastic! I'm so glad we could come to an agreement on something. I heard about your guy. Carter's the name? Well, it seems he just got the shit beaten out of him. So I don't expect him waking up tomorrow and shooting straight. We put him on the wagon and maybe Adriel yeah, Adriel and Carter can drive the wagon into town, and then me, Dimitri, and a few guys wait up on the hill to deal with any law showing up to town. Figures you'd sit and watch from afar while me and my guys do all the work. I think we deserve a bit more of the sheer. What'd you say? 50-50 sound like a fair deal for the work we're pulling? No. Your crew's still getting the original 30%. You seem to be forgetting you can't just walk into a store and plop a gold bar on the counter. Someone has to deal with turning that gold into money, and then paying the guy getting us into the vault to begin with. It hasn't been some small expense for me. I've invested a lot into this. Getting that treasurer nearly cost me a fortune. Fine. We'll talk about the dividends after we do the job. Am I done here? You are the blood running through my veins. You're the bones that keep me walking. You are my true son. More than that cowardice drunk ever was. I want you to remember that. Have a bit of faith in me. Then whatever. Here's to good luck and great fortune. Now, I've gotta go speak with my guys and prepare for tomorrow. Took you for a cigar, man. Ah, well, you know what they say. Any man who smokes cigars ain't really a man. And who says that? Me. When's the guy gonna get here anyways? We're getting paid to do nothing and you complain. I get impatient. And when I lose that patience, I can't be expected to sit around and put on my thumbs. That's why your boss asked for me. I know how to... Handle these things. Uh-huh. You mean me or the job? I'll leave that up for your own interpretation. Mm-hmm. Right. I interpret it as you're batshit crazy, and I need to stay away. Brutally honest. That's something I like about you. No hiding anything. <sighs> Great. That was meant to get you off my back, if anything. 
Well, saddle up, cowboy. You're stuck with me till this job's over. <laughs> oh, don't call me that. I am far from some cowboy. What in tarnation is the two of you talking about in here? What? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, it's time to get going. You're the contact? Who the hell else would I be? Now let's get our asses moving. I ain't got all day. This is the one who made us wait. Love what you've done with the place. Gotta be prepared for when them Yankees come trying to take what's ours. with all the ordnance you're packing here. What are you planning with all this? Well, if I done told you, then you go and ruin the farm for us. Now quit pesking around. I still know your allegiance. If it were up to me, I'd cut you both up and leave you in a ditch. But if the boss man wants to work with you, then you're gonna do it. Glad to know you're opinion on us. Don't go thinking that we forget you're working for the pansy-ass governor and his regime of shit-showing. None of us like you here. So keep that in your minds before thinking of something dumb. Duly noted. Then you're ready then? Good. Company, boss. Who? Sergeant Rayburn, on behalf of Governor William Alcott. Ah, uh, I was hoping for the governor himself, but if I must deal with you, then it will have to do. Gotta say, you're a lot nicer than the rest of your band. Old age has opened my eyes a bit. Back in the day, I would have arranged this and then killed you. But what benefit does that truly serve? So, the terms? Uh, terms. For what? They're asking what we're gonna get for bowing to their feet. Yeah, I suppose you two already met Henry here. He doesn't like you much. First time meeting, actually. Uh, a bunch of yellow-bellied Yankees looking to us when they need help. Of course. Ignore us any other time, but now they need us. Please, Henry. Let us hear them out. We've already discussed their offers. He wants us to go and kill some bitchy outlaw hiding out somewhere in New Austin. And we done already discussed how we should kill these pretenders instead. We ain't some slaves to the government. And I now recall saying that I would like to listen to their plea. You two are dismissed. Whatever you say. I agreed to hear the governor's proposals, so speak your peace. The governor wishes for your assistance in capturing Colt McAllister. A meeting has already been set. And the reward for doing so would be five grand. Paid to you for your cooperation a good deeds to the state. Which is a lot of money, yes. The problem which arises is the discontent stirring within the ranks, some of which my advisor Henry has already shown. And what is it you want to ensure the deal is made? What would you suggest? If it were me, I'd want out. I used to live something like this, and the governor helped me out, but seeing as, well... Age. I know that I don't have much time in this world. So, some pardon wouldn't do much for me. I want to let you in on a little bit of a secret. Do you know who I am? Uh, not really. All you know is I'm leading a little operation here.
When I was younger, I used to be a very ambitious man. The name's John Moore. Whether you knew it or not, my crew used to be the best of the best back in the day. Do you know the Reno gang? Nope. Never heard of them. Well, I don't blame you. It was a long time ago. I was the one who escaped. Watch as Gerald and Sparks were hung right in front of me. I should have been there that day. Instead, I was in the crowd, looking them dead in the eyes as they suffocated by the rope. Frank, what you would call our leader, fled to Canada with Anderson. Thought they could run off and leave the rest of us to die in the ruins. Well, we were all supposed to rot in the cell. Huh? Justice or whatever. Frank was captured and awaiting his sentence when a mob broke into the sheriff's house. Shot the guy. They took the key to the jails and then dragged Frank and the rest of the boys out into the streets and hung them like they were just some lonely dogs. In the end, it was just one group of criminals with what they thought to be the right idea, executing the other. It wasn't justice, it was just killers, just as much as we were. And yet, they were let free like nothing happened. You call a man a monster? For being down on his luck? Doing what he must to survive? And then the real monsters who hide behind an idea of society come out of hiding to show their fangs? My son, he isn't meant for this life. I realized that when the boy cried out after I made him shoot his first buck. What is a father meant to do? Force the boy to follow in my own footsteps when all I feel is regret for my life I've lived? You can go tell your governor that John J. Moore lives, but I'm just an old man waiting for his time to run out. If he wants to come after me, then let him. But if he does, word gets out about the company he keeps. If he wants my support, then you get my son out of this life. Give the pardon to him, not me. He shouldn't have to suffer for his father's poor choices. Give Alcott this letter. It outlines that for the pardon of my son and an additional $10,000 to pay off the rest of my gang, he will have my full support. Money will buy the loyalty of my men, make them rich, and they'll praise you as a saint. And for my son, the governor will have my respect and support. He's a very flexible man. I'm sure you will see to what you ask. We're not all bad men. I hope that's something you can remember.
sweet dreams.